Okay, um, welcome to our uh, second week of this class. Uh, so before we dive deep into uh, date visualizations, so I want to spend one week that talking about uh, date cleaning and also date processing. So when we have data and also normally it is very important to make sure that your data is cleaned and also is trusted. So that means we need to clean the data and also process the data in some way. Um, so this is from my big data uh, class, but I want to borrow the slide here so that um, the components of data analysis. So when we have the raw data, so data can be any resources and you need to ingest the data into your data storage. So the data storage can be a uh, database which we mentioned during the uh, data mining class. So their uh, the relational database and also non-SQL database. It can also be a data warehouse. So that can handle the structured data uh, where database can handle semi-structured and also structured. Uh, it can be also a data link. So data link can handle structured data, semi-structured data, and also unstructured data. Once we have the data in our uh, data container or the data storage, uh, we normally need to process the data so that we need to convert the data into the format that we can get the insight or the knowledge. Uh, so those analysis um, can be like sort aggregations, drawing, etc. And also this is also the, st the step that you can apply some business logic to produce meaningful sets. So for example, if you want to calculate the profit of your companies, etc. And normally we will store the data, so the data from storage, and we'll store the data back to our uh, either new location, or you can use the existing location, but use a different uh, uh, logic container. Um, so once we have the data that being processed, and also normally that being cleaned, and we can consume the data and also we can visualize the data. So for example, we can use the SQL queries or we can use BI tools like Tableau to generate reports and also dashboards. Okay, so let's review those three types of the data resources. So there are three types of data resources. Structured data, so that means that the data is organized in the table. Okay, so in the, in the uh, columns and also rows. Okay, so that is structured data. And the semi structured data, so that is stored in the key value pairs. Uh, so for example, like the dictionary, okay, or the JSON data. Okay, uh, hopefully this can ring some bells that from your data mining class. And also unstructured data. So unstructured data means that the data is not structured in any consistent way. So example like text message, videos, audios, etc. Unstructured data is normally stored in a data lake. Okay, so which is a relative new concept uh, recently. Uh, so, but why it is important to know the different data source? It turns out to be that most of the data that are unstructured. Okay, so structured data like those tables, semi-structure like CSV file, XML, JSON data, uh, unstructured anything else like videos, etc. And we also mentioned that we have learned relational database. So relational database basically is used to store the structured data, and we can use SQL so uh, the uh, to to making queries from the data. Uh, it is called relational database because we have the key value, pr primary keys and also foreign keys and they can relate it with each other so that is why they called relational database. The data warehouse is a more powerful uh, storage for the structured data. Okay, so that can support more complicated queries. So uh, data storage is place where when you have your your data that is from different resources, you will go through this ETL, so that is extract, transform, and also load 
procedure and you can store your data in your data warehouse and data warehouse is very very efficient that can support reporting OLAP database okay uh, and also you can support data mining so data warehouse is most powerful than database um, but it is more complicated and also it is more um, expensive uh, we also mentioned non-SQL database in the data mining class. So for example, we have the key value stores, um, column stores, graph stores, okay, and also document stores, especially the MongoDB is one of the most uh, famous non-SQL database. Um, so let's, for the MongoDB, so MongoDB is using the JSON data to store the data. So it is using a nested structure that called JavaScript object notation or JSON for short. So JSON has become extremely popular nowadays. And MongoDB is using uh, the binary format, which is called JSON, to store the data in MongoDB database. And so this is one example of the MongoDB dataset. So here we can see it, it has a, a pair of the curly bracket and it have key value pairs, so key value, key value. And it can has a nasty document. So within this within this value of this address key, we have another key value, key value pairs. Okay, so that is a MongoDB. So I'm talking about those re reviewing those database because after this week, we will spend three weeks that we are read data that from the relational database. Okay, RDS. We will also uh, get data from data warehouse, and also we are data, get data from the non SQL database. Okay, so we are trying to visualize data that from those different uh, data containers in Tableau. And we can see that how that does how does that look like to analyzing and also visualizing data from different uh, data storage. And you may also heard that there are two types of the data analytics. Um, the first one is called OLTP, so that is online transactional processing system. Okay, so OLTP is uh, the system where we have a lot of users. So for example, the banking system, okay, you have a lot of users, so user one, user two, user three, so they generate different transactions and they have a lot of insert, so that is very good for data in, so you have a lot of insert and also modifications, so update, for example, they, they, uh, they purchase some stuff and those are the transactions. So that is OLTP and OLTP is uh, normally, we are using relational database. Okay, using relational database. So, relational database to serve as this OLTP. Okay, however, the limitation of OLTP is that so when you want to perform some complicated queries and it can be slow, so that will be less efficient. Okay, so OLTP is great to take data, especially if you have very frequent uh, data change to read and write operators, especially a lot of write operators. And we are using the relational database, and also that is an OLTP system. Um, another system is called OLAP. So OLAP is called Online Analytical Processing System. So that is great for data out. So OLAP is more powerful and that can support very complicated queries. Okay. And you can join multiple tables together. So if you have multiple tables, okay, and you can join them from the, by using the primary keys and also foreign keys. And OLAP is very powerful to do those joins and also and to, to support those complicated queries. And normally we are using data warehouse. Sorry, that is data warehouse. 
uh, to serve to serve for the OLAP system. OK, so data warehouse is great for OLAP and also that can support complicated queries, um, especially ag aggregated analysis. And we can use our BI tools to connect with our data warehouse. OK, and also we can generate them to perform those complicated queries. Relational database, RDS, is great for OLAP, oh, sorry, OLTP. That is great for like if you have a lot of write, OK, and OLAP is great for a lot of complicated queries, so a lot of great uh, complicated read. OK, so normally uh, in a company, so we will have the both systems. So for example, we use a database to take user input and we will, up, we will transfer the data into our data warehouse for the complicated queries. So this part is called ETL. OK, so that's called extra extract, transform, and also load. So that is the ETL process.